truth is the truth, and the truth will set you free. So last night, all I did was just take the chain off. Here you go. Boom. Boom. And people gave their lives to Jesus. And it's cool because I just saw somebody here that I saw got saved last night. And then uh, or maybe this morning. And then this morning because it all mixes in and I don't ever remember where I'm at. And I'm like, I think I'm in Florida, but I forget. And then this morning, same thing. Boom. <clears throat> and people gave their lives to Jesus. Now tonight, I believe the same thing will happen. Yes. And I believe tonight that many of you will have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Right. You say, what do you mean an encounter? We're going to feel something. We're going to see something. It's going to be an out-of-body experience. I believe that just like Jesus said, a perverse generation longs for signs and wonders. I believe the gospel is good enough. And if you have those things that happen in your life, great. But if you don't, it doesn't mean that God's not near you. Amen. It just means that he's still there and he's waiting for you to have faith. And so I believe that you'll have an encounter with Jesus Christ. Why? Because the gospel is going to be preached. And anytime the gospel is preached, you see Jesus. You see him as he is, and you see your life as you are, and because of it, you have a decision to make. Tonight, you have a decision to make. And I pray that you choose wisely. Amen. I look, and I see an exit there. I see one there, and I see two there. And you can walk out of those exits right now. At some point tonight, you will walk out of those exits. And my fear, everywhere I go, is that people will walk out of these exits not knowing Jesus as their Savior. My hope everywhere I go is that when people dawn those doors as they head back out, that they walk out new people, free people, with a free future. Free because of the Prince of Peace and the King of Freedom, and his name is Jesus. Amen. I pray that when you leave this place tonight, you leave here different than you came. Yeah. And you can, but only through the power of Jesus in your life. That's right. You know what, man? Um, when I was little, I used to sit by the window and watch the world go by. And my, oh my, did the world pass by because time flew, yes, time flies, and it carries us all to the day we're six feet deep of services by graveside, and all we ever really want is for it to be a great ride. So I used to sit on the passenger side passing time when I'd watch every single car that passed us by, or at least I'd try. And at 10 years old, all I could think was, I wonder where I'm going to go on the day I die. Still to this day, I look out the window. Sometimes I roll down and I let the wind blow. And I close my eyes and I listen to the sound of travelers traveling by with the sun on my face as it illuminates the sky. And I can still hear the sweet voice of my mom on those long Sunday drives. And she'd say, son, you can be anything that you want to be. And if it was up to me, I'd do my best to make you believe that God's plans for you aren't make-believe, they're reality. And mom, I've been out here living those dreams and I hope you're proud of me because you taught me what it's like to live life powerfully. You showed me what it's like to silence the voices of those who say life is only a pursuit of a salary. What a tragedy. To live for money, it's a travesty. So mom, to be rich with no faith, forget it. Because if you broke is what I'd rather be. And if money talks, I don't want it to talk to me. Because I'd rather be a poor man stuck in poverty than to be a slave to paper, refusing to trust in God's sovereignty. At 10 years old, I was inspired. I was inspired. I was inspired of a life that inspires others to take off the flat tires and travel freely down the highway. Like I don't care what Satan tells me. Not one single thing is going to stand in my way. Because I'd rather be out here being made fun of for Jesus than to be forgotten in my drive. Let's be honest, man. So Amen. Amen. If we waste opportunities to get out there and spread truth, then we wake up at 85 and say, what happened to my youth? I never put it to use. Christians are afraid of letting their voice be heard. Even more afraid of letting God's voice be heard through them, not realizing that their life is on display and it's a show for all to see like true men. And the dead men around them by the power of their testimony could become new men. We make excuses to why we don't live sold out. Like, yo, man, I'm just human. Yes, you are. But God isn't. When he hung on the cross and said it is finished, he handed you a blank page of pen and said, here, write the first and last sentence. It's a war. Are you going to sit on the sidelines or get up and get in this? Because it's a fight, man. Every day it's a fight. It's a fight for what's right. It's a fight for your life. And so often the wrong feels so right. But I read the last page of the Bible. Believe me, it's going to be all right. But until he comes like a thief in the night, I'm going to live this life like every day is a gift from God because every day is a gift from God. And God didn't give us this gift so that we would bottom and be set adrift into a seat of selfishness. Like, what can I get? And how how much can I achieve? So we buy into this American dream, but really it's just an American skin. It's a suicidal society where we scorn the Tim Tebow's, but celebrate the Charlie Sheen's. And we wonder what it all means. And we wonder why we're losing the teens. It means the sin is on the rise. We bought into its lies, but thank God Jesus is still in the business of saving lives. Amen. Who I was 
by what I did because Jesus forgave because Jesus forgives. Now, so we would travel through this life looking in the rear view of the old you because Jesus doesn't say, I told you. He only says, I love you. Three nails and two wooden beams. Believe me, man, he loves you. And his promises are true. And the Bible is truth. And liberal professors who bash it are fools. Amen. God yes. still loves fools. And I'm really no better than them. I'm just a messed up dude who struggles with sin. But I'm not about to deny my creator to get an A on the paper. Because there's coming a day, whether it's soon or whether it's later, where someone in a suit and tie will stand on a stage as my loved ones cry and will say, the year I was born and the year that I died, and when they call my name, I will be far over the fray in a place far away, all because I chose Jesus over this. Because I didn't want to be another yes, Judas to sort away his Savior the week and a kiss. You can't pump the brakes on life's highway. You can't go back and you can't go sideways. And if I had it my way, I'd go back to the 10-year-old me and I'd say, Clay, don't waste one opportunity to pray. Be different from this world and stand out in every single way because we're all just traveling to our graves. And when you stand before Jesus, what will you say? God, we love you so much. And I believe you're meeting with us in this place right now. And I pray, God, that we see your glory tonight. I pray, God, that you just impact somebody's life and, and you change their heart tonight. God, we do not preach for fame or reputation. We 